do you want to know what regret tastes like? It tastes like cherry moonshine and sweet and sour. <clears throat> Something's sour and it's not just the sweet and sour. That's some old ass liquor. This is Drunken Knife Reviews. Um, talking today about the Reich Knives 1507T. It's the Tanto model. Comes in this nice case. Super soft. Hold two knives if you want. Um, this is the knife. I've heard it called a grasshopper because of its uh, kind of funky angled styling. Let's see if I can get this to focus on just the knife for you. Yeah, look at that. That's one of my favorite things about this knife is the aesthetics. That's what that's what I choose my knives based off of, honestly. It's almost entirely cut that out. Aesthetics. And this one is a nice looking knife. It's got some great machining on it. I don't know if you can see that, but there's just these smallest little machining marks. There's the back spacer for you. A nice machined pocket clip that actually functions pretty well. It's not a total pocket ripper or anything like that. There's the front. Some nice holes there, there that are mirrored in the pocket clip and uh, reflected in the back spacer and again on the spine. Some nice design uh, callbacks or design symmetry I suppose. There's a large screw there, a small screw there, and a large screw there. Pretty simple construction. You got your steel lock bar insert and blade stops. That's important to note, if you think these are thumb studs, you're wrong. Because I've got pretty strong thumbs, and I have yet to figure out a way to get this to open with just, there it goes. The blade stops are not an opening mechanism. Um, this nice and subtle flipper tab is the way to go. That's what it's designed for. That's the only way you want to use it, because honestly, it doesn't function great unless you're using flipper tab. I guess that makes sense. That's what it's designed for. Blade stops are not designed as thumb studs. Important to keep in mind. Um, my favorite things about this knife is the precise machining. Um, you got your tang lined up perfectly on there. You don't have any of that tang gap that bothers some people. I'm one of those people. Uh, it doesn't bother me substantially, but every now and then I look at a knife that has that and I go, wish it didn't have that. Um, one of the best things about this knife is its action. It is not the perfect action, I suppose, but honestly, look at that sucker. Pretty nice. Certainly the nicest action I, I've got. It's up there with like the... Uh, ZT0450. That's a pretty smooth knife, but honestly, I think this one's a bit better. If you compare that, it's not bad, honestly. But the Reich 1507T, that's where it's at. That is the action you want to see in a knife. Um, the steel is nice on this one, as far as I know. Again, never been a steel expert, but you can see there. CTS-204P, um, kind of a super steel from my knowledge, which is again limited, but it's kind of cool to have exotic uh, steels as options out there. And uh, nice thing, like I might have mentioned before, got a nice solid and a subtle, more importantly, flipper tab there. It's not this glaring finger sticking out the back of your knife. It's just enough for what you need to deploy that knife. This knife runs on ceramic bearings. It has a metal ball detent. Uh, I believe it's metal. I don't think it's ceramic. Um, but the, the bearings definitely are ceramic. Um, really smooth action. One of my nitpicky things, one of my more break side of the make or break, is the detent is a little bit far from the lock bar face for my taste. There are some occasions where you get it off the lock bar and it just hits the detent. Let's see if I can make it happen. Let's see. And then you're sort of there, stuck, stuck there shaking the knife because it's got to overcome that detent. 
and when the when the detent's a little closer to the lock bar, it's less of a problem. It's not a huge problem, small issue, but it does bother me a little bit. Uh, the lanyard hole, I think, is kind of decent on this knife. I'm not a lanyard guy, so I prefer knives not to have lanyard holes on them at all. I think it's a pointless thing for me, but obviously you gotta have it for people who do want it. But the lanyard hole is there. It comes out through a little cutout in the backspacer there. Let me show you the inside of this knife if I can. Well, there's your lockup. Pretty early lockup. I'm not sure exactly how I feel about early lockup. Um, but as far as oh, that's bad. As far as access to the lock bar, it's not terrible. It's not like there's a big cutout or anything, but there's plenty of access to just sort of mush your thumb in there and mush it aside. Um, this is a fun fiddling knife. The lock bar tension isn't too rough, so it it gets by with the fact that there's not a cutout for that lock bar. Um, but if you look inside, you can see there is some internal machining there to lighten the handles, uh, which I appreciate. It's a, kind of a large knife, honestly. That's one of the more on the breaker si break side for some people. This is a 3.75 inch knife. That's pretty substantial. Illegal in a lot of areas, um, and quite possibly freaky to people who are freaked out by knives, but they're gonna be freaked out by most knives. Uh, and honestly, it's possible to open this one a little more subtly and then you can just sort of choke up on it and cut away at whatever you need to cut at. Trim your fingernails, yada yada. You can do that subtly without freaking people out. And honestly, because it's so pretty, you can get away with a bit more of a knife because it's more of an eye catcher. Um, on the break side of things again, there's a little bit of a sharp edge on this lock bar. Every surface on this knife, every edge is pretty well radiused and rounded, except for that one. This line right here is a little bit sharp, and it's kind of an expensive knife. I wish they had rounded this edge. That's something that they did do fairly well on the 0450. That edge right there, that's got a chamfer on it, and that's rounded. Um, but it doesn't, it's not there on this on this knife. And I wish it had been. That would have been a, a better better choice, in my opinion. Um, another thing on the brake side is uh, the detent hole. You can see there it shows on the outside of the knife. Many knives do do show, but that one is almost fully out there. And I, and I get that there's a lot of elements that go into a knife, but honestly I just wish that wasn't poking out there. It's a little bit, a little bit ugly and I don't want it collecting junk and lint. Uh, because it's exposed um, or apple juice or whatever you're cutting. Uh, a little bit on the break side is this might look like a finger choil. It's not. Don't use it as a finger choil. This knife feels good ergonomically in this grip, but if you try to choke up, all of a sudden it becomes super awkward. And your fingers like really close to the edge there. This is this is not a finger choil. Don't use it as one. And that that's part of the make or break is this big knife can be a little bit unwieldy just because it's super long. Um, and let's get into the big the big issues on this knife. I like this knife. This is a good knife in my opinion. But there were some super bad things when I first got this. This came in the mail from the dealer and this screw backed out on its own just from flipping action. Trying to break it in, this screw backed out and was completely loose. My centering was off. My action started not being so great, and I had to I had to put Loctite on. There was no Loctite in there, so I opened up the knife to get a little more familiar with the internals. And there was rust on the inside, and there's there's these steel, I guess races that the bearings ride on inside of the knife, and they had been rusted. I don't know how that happened. Maybe it was humid wherever this came from. Um, maybe it was humid on the ship over from China. That's probably another break for some people, is this is manufactured in China, this is not a USA knife. Um, but yeah, it came with rust in it, and I was able to polish that up and clean that up, and I notified the dealer uh, to let them know that some of their knives might be having rust inside them. And I, I really don't think Reich has like a, a warranty policy, as far as I'm aware, there's maybe one guy that you can sort of contact for warranty issues, but being a Chinese knife company, there's less access to warranty service if you need it. 
Um, so that might be a break for some people. And probably the biggest thing for a lot of people is this isn't a cheap knife. There's a lot of machining that goes into this and it's got fancy materials, titanium and, and CTS 204P. But this is a this is a three hundred fifty dollar knife. That's the most expensive knife I've ever bought. Uh, it probably will remain the most expensive knife I ever buy for quite some time because honestly, uh, I'm not rolling in the dough currently, and uh, I like it a lot. But for a three hundred fifty dollar knife, it should have come with Loctite in the pivot screw. It should have come with oil on the bearings to prevent rust. Um, and honestly, I think it probably should have been rounded just a little bit on that edge. Those are my big complaints, but honestly, the knife sort of redeems itself for me because of those aesthetics and that action. I'm willing to put up with that stuff because I was able to correct it. If I hadn't been able to, I would have returned it, but I was able to polish those washers and check up on again a couple months later. There has been no rust returning. This has become a solid knife, but when it was shipped to me, there were some pretty major issues. Uh, I hope they're recovered now, but that's something to watch out for if you do order it. Um, so that's it. Thank you.